Working with analog and digital tools at the same time doesn't have to be complicated. You can get the best of both worlds. You just have to think about them in how they function best in the ideation to production process of working with any idea in knowledge work. Hey there, I'm Justin with Effective, and I want to walk you through the process that I've been experimenting with over the last few weeks to put analog and digital tools to their best use together. So on the screen, you're seeing my obsidian canvas that is documenting this process that I have been using. So first and foremost, we have capture and thinking, development, then the planning and execution process, and then ultimately production of the idea. This is largely stages that I look at. It's not exactly representative, but it's largely the stages that I look at when I am thinking about how do I work with ideas and how do I work with knowledge and actually make something of them. It all starts with capturing your ideas and thinking. This is where I think analog really starts to make sense for most people. For example, I have a field notes notebook that I have been um, carrying around with me over the last few months on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm out and about. And I will write things out such as notes, things that people were saying, ideas that I have had, and so forth. I've got plans in here for bookcases that I want to try building for my wife. And so it, it's been really nice to have just a scratch pad that I carry with me. I'm developing these ideas, but it's not the place necessarily that I'm executing them from or storing them long term. It's literally just I'm thinking through this process. Sometimes I'll write things down in my bullet journal, but I've been realizing that bullet journaling fits in a much different flow of this process for me than it does for most people. When I have ideas that I'm trying to work on, I typically use a legal style notepad or something like this. This is a Rhodia dot book that I picked up a few years ago, and I love this format because because it's a it's spiral bound you can flip it over pretty easily and write on both sides but b you can also just write freely in it the square format makes me feel like i don't have to structure everything in it in order to keep it orderly whereas with my bullet journal or other types of notebooks i typically want to have some sort of structure or order to it it's just the way my mind latches onto that and so this capture and thinking process is largely about journaling all of my ideas out i'll take the notebook like this and I will just start writing. What do I think about this idea? What do I think about the different steps that I need to get there? What are all the different things that are on my mind about this? And then from there, I take really this brain dump and I'll start to make sense of it. This will typically happen in digital tools. So something like Miro, where you have a big board of sticky notes or Obsidian Canvas like we have on the screen here, or even a mind mapping tool like MindNode if I feel like there's more structure that needs to be created out of this. Largely, this development process is looking at the bigger picture of the work that I'm undertaking. What are the milestones that I need to complete? What's the ultimate outcome that I want to see realized out of this? And what is the general workload and timeline that it's going to take for me to get there? Again, this is all taking place digitally because I can make lots of edits and revisions. And it's just making sense and putting some order to the things that I was able to think through in an analog context. From there, once I feel like I have this set of work sorted out, it will go into what I consider more of a planning phase. So from there, it's let's just get started and cranking on the project, moving towards that first milestone or first objective that I wanna to try to hit with it. For that, I rely on weekly planning. Inside of my bullet journal, and I unfortunately won't be able to share it in the video here just due to sensitivity of things that I write down in it, my weekly planning takes place on a single spread. And on the left-hand side, it largely just shows my top priority for the week, other projects that are in focus, and events upcoming, just more of a at-a-glance dashboard for the week. And then on the right-hand page, it's tasks that are oriented for this week, things that need to get done this week. Sometimes it will serve as an urgent capture bucket for things that need to get done right away. But more often than not, it's just the list of items that move the needle forward on the things that are the most important to me. So then from there, once that is written down on a weekly basis, I'll take some time on Fridays to go through my project plans, figure out what needs to happen next, and then write down in my bullet journal what I wanna get done the next week. Then it goes into the execution phase, which is all about production. The production typically happens in digital tools, unless I'm building something in my shop or working with friends on something. 
it's almost always on a computer somewhere. So it's either a video like this, or it's in some kind of a Word document. The output is usually some sort of creation. And in order to get this work done, I have become a bigger believer in trying to find some balance to time blocking. I'll time block the most important work, but I don't typically time block my entire day like Cal Newport does, solely because it just gets a little complicated to try to do that over an entire waking day. There's a lot of ebb and flow that happens, especially when you have young kids like I do. And so you have to have some flexibility in your mind. When I write things down, I want them to kind of set in stone, and I know you can adjust and on the fly and so forth, but having the fluidity in my day and finding the balance between what I am planning and what I'm not planning is the right balance for me. And so I'll usually take the things that need to get done this week that I've written down in my bullet journal, and I will block time on my calendar to make sure those things get done. When it's on my calendar and it's visible, I will make time to get that thing moving. And then I have this set up as a loop here as well, because a lot of times in the production process, you get more ideas, which means you need to capture them and you start thinking through them if it's actually something that you want to take on. So all this to say is I've been finding a lot of effectiveness in spending more of my time time and analog tools while still leveraging digital tools for their strengths that they have. Digital tools are excellent for lots of revisions or cranking out work, but they're not really the best in my mind for myself anyway, for things like ideating, journaling, getting all my thoughts out because I often get distracted. When an analog notebook will help me just focus and process, I can take it anywhere, I can go outside with it, I don't have to sit in my office all day long either to capture and think about the things that matter to me. But I would love to hear from you. What are your successes with an analog tool in your digital productivity workflow? I really think that there are some ways you can leverage strengths here. And I know the way that I'm approaching this is not going to be best for everyone. So if you found a way that works for you, I would love to hear from you in the comments or sign up for the newsletter below to stay up to date with all the things that we have going on here at Effective. Again, my name is Justin with Effective. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. But until then, stay effective.